I shall sign. Yes, you shall sign. We are now deciding on the values of our future Europe. So let us do that without abstaining all moral responsibility to corporations. We are, after all, in Europe in 2012, not in the 1980s cyberpunk dystopias. <laughs> Tonight you will dream about your signatures movement. So this is a privacy-friendly browser which doesn't store your IP number, they even make it here like now offers anonymous results on the sister website. Um, I use it for some things, but normally the search results are more awkward, so if I mm -hmm. Google myself, for instance. Because there are less information on it, because less people no. use it. Well, it, virtually that also. Uh, but it also ranks pages differently, so you can see here that the European Parliament website for me only comes as a kind of lower search result, whereas this mm -hmm. YouTube video from Romania actually is um, surprisingly high ranked. Are these the tabled ones? Yes. Mm -hmm. Just okay. printed on both sides. So when we had the presentation of the draft opinion in the industry committee, I think the commission, when they made their comment, they were like, we're very happy that the committee has respected uh, our ambition to make a regulation, and we're very happy that the parliament endorses this, but it's also important that the parliament doesn't forget our other objective with this regulation, which is to protect personal data. So that was kind of a brutal comment, <laughs> yeah. I think, to make on the draft opinion. We are happy that the Parliament's overall supports the Commission's objectives and the regulation as such and the one-stop shop that we are uh, introducing in order to simplify the legal environment for the business, which is one of our main objectives. Of course, the other objective is to enhance the fundamental right to data protection, and we have to have the two objectives in mind when we examine uh, this regulation, and it's, uh, we have to find the right balance. This, is, this can be one of those stories that I tell people later at the time when I wrote my name 223 times in a row. <laughs> so this is another type of tool that I use now, which is a script blocker, so that no web page can run scripts on my computer without me knowing about it. Um, there's actually a surprising amount of scripts in the world. I think it's like too much to really be practical for yeah. people to implement a lot. It would be easier if there was, I don't know, some kind of a legislation that maybe helped citizen, yes. citizens know what happens with the data anyway. Are you done? 151. He hanged here. He called and wanted us to come meet him at the elevator. Come here, come here. Have you got a He wanted us to meet him at the elevator now because we're under, otherwise we'll be late. 152. 153. I am on 153, so I have 70 left. I will be back in like 40 minutes to complete this. Is it too late? Uh, yeah, I think it's. A, I need to. Yeah. No worries. Be, continue, continue. Yes. I will drag him here and say that we will have to be late because you have to sign. Okay. Just continue signing. We know from 17 years with the Data Protection Directive that companies that process or control personal data 
often do not apply suitable protection methods, even when they could easily do so, we as a public and as persons have an interest in keeping authorization and documentation in. Using the legislative tool uh, might be the better way to raise uh, citizens' awareness about uh, how their data is being used. I don't think necessarily that legislation would help citizens become more aware of how their data is being used. But if we assume that legislation is normally upheld, as in we have the aspiration of having legislation that is actually enforceable, yeah. then one would assume that a citizen who does read that law and does have expectations on how their data uh, is being collected and by whom and for what purposes, would be able to rely on the objectives and the aims of the law to actually be upheld. Yeah, and they can sue people infringing, people or companies infringing their Yes, right. But then what's going to happen? Because uh, the presentation of the draft report was uh, a couple of days ago. So is there room for any more change or what? Well, I guess in the main committee, which is the Civil Liberties Committee, they will only have the um, deadline for amendments on the 27th. So we tabled all of our amendments on the industry committee opinion in December. I will try to be faster. Okay. And I think you can see it also on the signatures that my hand is getting more tired. <laughs> and now in the main committee also there will be an amendment procedure. Um, and there's still some stuff to work on in, in, the in the regulation, the way that it was presented in the Civil Liberties Committee. And I hope that we will see a stronger regulation come out at the end than the quite compromised version that we saw during the presentation. Yourself behind the steam. The sun is slipping through our rubber eyes. Surely this is no big surprise. Oh, now every day comes so quickly. And how do I take my coffee? I forget. 223. Whoa! Wait. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> That's the last one. Okay. One. Thanks. Well done. Rip as it all comes creeping in.